very good morning to one and all here present. I've had a long written speech, but uh, please pardon me that uh, we are running against time and uh, we have a full working day, and particularly in view of the yesterday's uh, new announcement, we have had a function in the High Court. Uh, very respected uh, Vice Chancellor uh, of RV University, Dr. Vyasar Murthy, the other dignitaries, Mr. Kapoor, and other dignitaries, uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen. So aptly said by Mr. Uh, Kapoor that today it's not the situation that we just run through the computers and find out what the authorities are or what the acts and rules are. It, there's, much, there's something much more which needs to be done. As a legal profession in uh, about, if you take the entire span of about a century, people with Quest used to join the legal profession and they shifted towards this uh, freedom struggle and post uh, at and around 1960s, 70s and 80s, people were not prioritizing law as a career profession. P the impetus was more towards engineering, medicine and other faculties. By 1990, the the entire, uh, para there was a paradigm shift and people start taking, children start choosing law as a career oriented uh, profession with five years law college. Having said that now, what is the challenge, what are the challenges that uh, we are now have is that you see the ones the law commission report noted the legal education is a science that imparts knowledge of specific principles and legal provisions to enable students to enter the legal profession. I must now quote what, uh, how legal uh, profession emerged and how very serious legal practitioners worked and they came up in their career. One or two small examples, particularly Mr. Suli Sarabji, with whom I had a very close association, with whom I worked for a long time. You may be surprised to note that for about, uh, mm, for several number of years, at least in his early part, when he was working with uh, uh, his senior Karshedji, nearly for about four years, you know, he has, he had to do this, observing, assisting the senior and learning experience. So is another luminary, Mr. Uh, Ram Jait Malani, with whom I also had the privilege of a little association and I had the privilege of sharing the days with both of them in uh, the Christ College. You know, at the age of 17, he started his practice. He came from, he came with 10 rupees to India. He was, he was from the earlier Pakistan, now what we call as Pakistan, the United uh, India at that point of time. And he was underage to be uh, registered as a practitioner. He fought his own case, then ultimately he won that. Later on, he is a legendary, all of you know. What we have today, the challenges are that to see the, how the legal profession is to be looked into and how we have, will have to take it further. About 50 to 80 years back, say about We'll start for about with a history of about 100 years. So generally it used to be a civil litigation and some criminal litigation, period. So very, uh, very a kind of a orthodox lawyers used to be handling the civil litigations as also the civil and the criminal litigation. We have the Anglo-Saxon law and things used to be happening on their own post-independence and after the constitution, uh, we have had the our own constitution in 1950. The entire dimension of the 
writ jurisdiction of uh, the Supreme Court and the High Courts, the development of law, it emerged more particularly to cut short the whole thing which from nine, Article 14 to 19 to etc. to now we have of Article 21 where you see the entire the gamut and the scope of Article 21 has been, it has been, uh, the Supreme Court has expanded it so much that you know it, in every sphere of our life that we can find out what, where we can, we can relate it to Article 21 of Constitution. Now I have a caveat to say that we always talk about right under Article 21, right under the Constitution, etc., etc. Recent times, uh, my observation is, and general observation of several, is that teachers focus more on the on the what the textbook is, what the Constitution is, and more particularly the what the rights are. My humble opinion would be that it should not only be the, it should be concentrated only for the rights. The inculcation of value must start at the school and the college level. And the duty aspect must be so much uh, highlighted and, uh, you know, in a kind of, it must be indoctrinated into the small children and particularly at an adolescent age when they are in the, in the primordium of their uh, colleges in the beginning times, in the first five years of their career as students and little later as the junior, juniors and you know the interns, etc. If these values are inculcated, their entire dimension of looking into how to look exactly look into the profession of law and how they can do the best of both, I'm sure that that will culminate in uh, the people taking it into uh, the right perspective and they becoming very good lawyers or the consultants, judges or whatever. Today, the as far as the study material and the facilities, those are available to the law students, it is phenomenal. 40, 35 years back when we were in the colleges, we, will, we had to depend on the bound books, bound volumes of the books and ARs and SACs, all bound volumes sit in the library and at the appointed hour study everything. Today you have the computers, you have the laptops, you have the iPads and you have the telephones where you can access any judgment and any law, any statute at a given point of time. Ladies and gentlemen, the now the conclave today is set for what is that the empowering the legal educators for tomorrow. The entire dimension of the world is going to change in the next five to ten years. Nobody had perhaps thought that we it was as simple as for us to write from the corner shop to buy a, cho buy a few chocolates for about 100 rupees or to going to a big mall and buying anything for about 5 lakhs rupees. You can, <coughs> you can transact over your smartphone. The position today is that, you see, the technology has reached a zenith and unless and until that we, in the legal profession, reach to that height, perhaps I'm afraid that we may not be able to catch up. The teachers must be abreast with what the latest technological tools we have, what is the law governing, particularly the cyber law, and uh, and and equip the children, the students with all these latest technologies alongside with the, with the knowledge of law which see the, we have had the civil procedure code, the entire criminal procedure code and the uh, evidence act has now been replaced subject to of course what the finally the Supreme Court will say about it. Therefore, the, there must be a, 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 a a comparative study of how the law earlier stood, how the law changed by virtue of this organic document what we call as Constitution of India and how it is likely to change in future times to come. Lawyers must be ahead of schedule and ahead of time and to do that the equipment is very important 
I am sure that with the with the premier institution like Carvi and uh, premier uh, research uh, research tool of Manupatra, the and the teachers will will bring in the state of art uh, teaching, and it will benefit all the students community in days to come. Thank you very much for calling me here. I would have loved to speak for more time with my prepared speech, but for the uh, the clock in front of me, the time ticking, I have been, I have requested uh, Professor Sharmaji to pardon me for to and grant me leave to leave immediately for an, another assignment. And we have a full working code today. 10:30 the code starts. I'm sure that we'll have several other occasions where I can still interact and talk to you at length. Thank you very much.